Hey everybody, what's going on? It's NASCAR fan here, and after a bunch of requests from some live streams I've done, I'm going to be doing uh, a video series between the GT Sport demo and the full game, showing you guys how the livery editor works. This is going to be a multi-part series, and today we're going to start off with basics and uh, familiarizing ourselves with the user interface. Now, this is one of the paint schemes I've designed on the Mercedes AMG GT3. Um, it is available on the GT database right now. It's my highest rated paint scheme. It's nearing 100 likes. So I'm pretty satisfied with it, and it's going to be a good tool for us to use today. So first things first, where's the livery editor at? This is our main menu. And to get to the livery editor, you're going to want the car that you're going to want to paint selected. And you're going to move yourself down to the livery editor option here. From here, we have several options. Obviously, you can create a helmet livery, a suit livery, which we'll get into later, but for now we're going to get into the car livery. So what we're going to do here, we can open designs if we have a previous design we'd like to play with here, but I'm going to open a new design here for the sake of simplicity to show you guys this little tutorial. So this is what the main car looks like. See, we have a large array of options here. So the first one here is the preview. The preview is basically let you hover the camera around as you like uh, using the right analog stick. You can also hold the R1 button by default and use the left analog stick to pan the camera however you would like. And the L2 and R2 triggers zoom in and out. So it's pretty handy because uh, you can use these camera controls while you're painting as well. But also it comes in really good handy during the preview and you can really zoom up and look at the beauty of these cars. So with that said, that's the preview. You have three different backgrounds as of the demo to choose from, which is a white background, a black background, and an outdoor background. Now, there are differences in the lighting here. I think this is the most uh, realistic one. This is uh, as if it was on a racetrack, but you notice that there's shading here. Uh, black is just kind of overall grayscaled, and then there's this white, which is probably one of the best ones to work with, but to be honest, it's a little bit hard on the eyes, in my opinion. I always, I kind of like to use the outdoor one. We also have paint, and this is where things kind of start getting into the nitty gritty. Um, you start out with your wheel, which you can paint whatever color you want. You see we have several um, you know, swatches here to choose from, or you can go down and select the color picker, and you have a full, RG, or a full RGB and you know all this. You get the full color wheel, basically, uh, in rectangle form, of course, to choose from, and you can make your own colors. So let's just make this uh, one of my favorite colors is just a really bright pink, hot pink. And that looks pretty nice. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. And you'll see here that it uh, is pretty simple. We can also choose if we want it metallic or pearl. And obviously this is not in the demo, but special colors that you can get from the mileage exchange will be down here as well. So we'll hit OK. We like those wheels. Now we go into Paint All. And what this does is it sets the base color for the car. Now we go back into our color palette. You'll see we have color history now. So we can select any color that we've previously used. So if you want to make the rims match the paint scheme of the whole car, pretty simple stuff but that's not what we're gonna do here we're gonna go up and we're gonna select black and we're gonna be able to see here more prevalently what the changes between pearl and metallic do they just change the overall look of the car I like the metallic we're gonna go ahead and OK and now that you've done the paint all you have all these options for use so body is the main guts of the car um, it's basically what you're gonna be working with the most uh, it's it's the base part it's, it's the pride and joy, I guess you could say, of the car. You can see how it's getting colored here. Um, we're going to leave it black. See what the hood does. The hood is, and of course, hoods are different for each car. Some of them uh, come over on the fenders a little bit, but most of them are going to be like this. And that's going to be the hood or the bonnet of the car. And you can color that separately, which is pretty handy. And if you wanted to, you can make it a different color. So if you want to have a matte hood or something like that, uh, you can do that. So we're going to go ahead and cancel that edit. We have the side mirrors, which is a nice touch. You can color the mirrors individually. So I kind of like the pink on the mirrors. So we're going to go ahead and make those pink again. And we'll make that a solid pink. We also have the rear wing when applicable. And this will paint the entirety of the rear wing. Now you'll notice there are some black lines here on this car. And there's a reason for that. And you will see in a moment why that is. So that's the rear wing, and that'll paint that. And then you have this as well. It's called the other section. And the reason why I chose this AMG is because it has a very prevalent set of other. Um, 
there's going to be some parts on the car that you can't just regularly color. Um, and it, you'll see what it is on here. But there are some things that do stick around on the car. And that is usually going to fall underneath the other. It's different for every car. Some cars don't even have it. Um, and you see for the Mercedes, this is what it is. It is going to be the outlines here, the uh, aerodynamic bits on the front, a little bit of the splitter, the outline of the grille, and the lines on the rear wing. And like I said, it is different for every car. But that's basically how that is. And we will go ahead and skip over decal for now and skip over wheel for now, but we will go over to racing item. And this is basically where you'll put your numbers on the car. You see we have a large array of numbers to choose from. Some of them blend in with the black. Some of them have outlines. Then, of course, if you wanted to, you could put the normal uh, default one on there if your car has one to begin with. Our car does, but we're going to go ahead and do this here. And then you have your number. You can put up to three numbers in at a time, and it'll do quite nice, uh, quite a nice job of putting that in for you. You can also do double O if you wanted to do double O seven. See, unfortunately, that does not work. It does eliminate that leading zero, so you can't do 007, but you could always put it in manually if you wanted um, and make your own. Uh, I do wonder if they are going to fix that in the future, because I think it would be cool to have the 007s and whatnot, but you can put up to three numbers in there. So that is how that works. You also have the windshield banners. You see we have a normal one here, and it's about the same as the black one. The normal one is the one that comes with the regular livery. We're going to go ahead and check out the white one as well. So you get a nice option there, and that comes for just about every car. Um, you also have your driver name, which you can put in normal, which will be, if it, if there is a normal, it'll be basically the, the, the regular paint schemes drivers, which is a nice touch. Uh, you also have black and white, of course, and it'll put in your username, which is cool. And then this car is also special because it does have light covers. Um, you see we are working with the yellow light covers. If you wanted to change those to normal, we could. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that and leave them on normal for now. And that is the racing item. Now the wheels section, you have the road wheels here. Now how this works is that in the full game you'll be able to buy different rims and you can apply uh, rims onto these cars as you see fit. Right now we don't have any unfortunately, but that's where you would find them. Tire stickers are something we do have. And on racing cars you have uh, the tire supplier. We can see if we pan the camera over here using those camera control options I talked about earlier. You can see we have Michelin tires on board with us, but if we don't want Michelin, we don't need Michelins. We can have unbranded tires. We can have Bridgestones, Dunlops, Falcon, Hankook, uh, and a large array of others here. You can even get Goodyear Eagles and Firestone Reds if you really wanted to. We're Just for the sake of this, we're going to go ahead and go with the Michelins. And of course, there's a default as well. So I believe this Michelin livery was slightly different. But now we get into the bulk of where you're going to be spending your time, we have the decal editor. And how this works is you have several options here. You can paint on the other, the rear wing, the side mirror, the hood, and the body. All of them are in the same dimensions as we have previously defined. There's also an option down here for your decal textures. So if you want matte decals, if you want semi-gloss or gloss decals, you can adjust that as you see fit. So the first thing you're going to do is when you're going to add a layer is you're going to have a camera option. And this is going to be how the layer uh, how the decal is applied. So if you want to put something on the hood, uh, well, obviously you'd have to go to the hood settings. Let's say you want to put something on the roof. You have to go to the roof view because if you go from the side and then pan the camera up, it's not going to project correctly. Same goes if you want to put something on the side. You have to go from that side uh, because the way that the camera is facing is how it's going to be applied. Um, and this is just for basics. There are ways to change this, but we will get into that at a later day uh, in a later video. This is just some basic stuff right now. So we'll go open. If you guys didn't know what I did there, I went ahead. Let me explain that a bit better. You have the projection method, which is a way to kind of change, you know, whether you want it to align with the surface of the car or align with the camera. We uh, typically go with align with the camera. And you can change afterward if you want to project somewhere else. But then we'll hit this blue line here um, to go to choose decal. We'll go to shape. And we have a large array of things here. We have patterns and we have shapes. We have fonts, logos, all of this. Nine out of ten times, you're going to want to start with a shape. You might have a sponsor in mind. Uh, of course, we have personal decals, but that's another video um, to be coming soon. But you usually have, you know, a good idea of what you want. And the first thing you want to do is find your shape. And just for uh, the sake of simplicity, we're going to go with a simple swoosh. 
And now we get into our tools here. You see at the bottom of the screen, you have the left analog stick to move it around. You have the right analog stick to scale it on an axis. You can uh, uh, do it. Right now it's scaling it proportionally. Um, we also have L2 and R2 to rotate it in respective directions, which is helpful. And we have the L1 to skew it as we please. So if you know what a skew tool does, this is basically the skew tool. And this is where your off-scale scaling is. Uh, that sounded off proportion scaling. So up right now on the right analog stick and then down makes it change like this and then left and right makes it taller or smaller. I think this is actually flipped at the moment because I have rotated the piece but you get the idea and you can play around with that as you see fit to find a design you want. So we're just gonna very quickly here since we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this for the sake of the video's length we're just gonna do a nice little swoosh here. Um, and we're going to be messing around with stuff. You can also reset the rotation and the tilt if you wish with the L3 and R3 pressing down on the analog sticks. But I, I kind of like how this looks right here. It's not too bad. We're going to angle it up slightly using a combination of those tools that I just described. And we're going to try and lead this out. A good tip, a good rule of thumb, is that headlights are, and taillights are your friend if you don't want to perfectly line stuff up. It's a good way to uh, kind of, you know pick it up where it leaves off on the back end of the car. Uh, some would say it's lazy, but honestly, I don't think it's that lazy. I think it's just using uh, using things to your advantage. And as we play around and scale with this a little bit, you can see what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and o hit OK, and we have several options pop up. Again, the projection area, you can change things here. That's a This is something that you shouldn't really mess with a whole lot. Um, but then we have, this is something you will mess with a lot. Obviously you have the decal color, so you can change it to whatever color you wish. Uh, we're just going to go with a, we're going to go with a nice blue here, I think. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time selecting a color here. Because again, sake of the video. But we got a nice pastel blue here. And we're going to go ahead and OK. So that's how you change the decal color. But then you have layer controls. You have flip horizontally, horizontally, which you see what that does there. And you can undo it by hitting it again. Flip vertically. And of course we're rotated slightly. And then you have duplicate, which allows you to copy uh, the layer. But we're not going to do that right now. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate on reverse. This is probably the most handy tool in the entire paint booth. Because you notice how we've painted on one side. Hitting duplicate on reverse mirrors it perfectly on the other side. So this saves us a lot of hassle of having to line stuff up. It does it automatically for us relatively simply as well and it's just super helpful and you can edit that individually uh, as well which is also really helpful but now we're going to go ahead and duplicate it just a standard duplicate and this is kind of how you can do outlines as well so we're going to go in here and we're going to recolor this let's say we want it we want this bit white okay so here we go we have this white and then once again, we're just going to go ahead and go to duplicate on reverse now because it'll save the one that you have when you duplicate it. You see, now we've quickly duplicated on reverse and then we'll duplicate again. And stuff like this is how you layer pretty easily. Um, it, it, it gets pretty simple. Um, it's fun once you get in the groove because it's a relatively easy process. And all, right away, we have like three pretty nice stripes along the side of the car. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to fill this in as well. So let's say we just want to duplicate on reverse. And let's say we're done. So that's how you have it here. Let's say, for example, you wanted the white to be over top here. You can change this easily. Hit triangle. Scroll down the one you want and then hit triangle. And then you're going to want to hit move layer. So you can also delete it all together. You can add something below or above it if you want to work on something in that area. And you can also duplicate it all together through this. But we're going to go to move layer here. And let's say we want to move this to the top. You see now it covers up the pink we had, leaves that nice little white slot, um, that light, that white interval. But we're going to go ahead and move this back down because I prefer the older one myself. So there you go. Um, and you have to do that individually. It does not mirror that automatically, but it's not a huge deal really. Um, because you can just do it again on the other side and it's pretty simple to do. So what we're going to do now is we're going to teach you about filling in. And that'll probably be the last thing we do here because it is just going to be a simple little livery. So again, we look at our camera. We see what we want to do. We'll go ahead and choose our decal here. I'm going to choose my favorite tool uh, in any type of painting scenario. It is the teardrop tool. And this one specifically. 
The reason I like a teardrop tool is because it allows you to curve along lines perfect, uh, pretty well, actually. We'll go ahead and zoom in, like I mentioned here, zoom in and pan the camera around. You notice how it's on a consistent curve. It allows you to really kind of go up against the line as you move and kind of line things up with finesse. And it, allow, it just really allows for a lot of flexibility in the paint booth. And since we are working on a live 3D model when we paint cars in Gran Turismo Sport, that can come in handy big time. Something that's really uh, good about this paint booth is that when you... Uh, I've actually seen this in other paint booths before. You can uh, have an outline when you have two s similarly colored things on top of each other. Gran Turismo Sport does not do that. We make a big teardrop. We fill in the rest of this panel that we wanted to fill in. Quickly hit duplicate on reverse, and voila, we have completed that. And you'll see what I was talking about with where you want to get it on the angle that you want to actually hit, because you'll notice we were going from the side here, and it fades over to the back end, and then kind of tapers off, and it looks kind of ugly. So I'm going to show you how to line that up. So we're going to go to add layer, and now we're going to move to the rear. And what you can use is just a line or a shape. I'm going to just use a line here to show you more about how that off, the off, um or our off orientation scaling works, the disproportionate scaling. See how we're making it, we're stretching it bigger instead of just making the whole thing equally bigger. We're stretching one side bigger than the other, and it allows us to do stuff like this. It allows us to quickly fill in spaces on the car that we otherwise wouldn't be able to do. So I'm going to pan this camera around to try and get a general idea of where this would line up with the rest of the scheme because we still need to we need to bleed these blue and white lines throughout the rest of the car just to make it look uniform and you don't have to but it's a good rule of thumb to carry that through obviously everybody has a different creative vision and I think that's great and I think that everybody uh, has their own little flair now we don't have to duplicate on reverse this time we can just simply duplicate pull down decal color once more go back to that white that we have and then we'll do that there then we'll hit OK and then we'll just simply duplicate one more time hit OK decal color, find that pink that we had, and then we will move it down slightly. And you'll notice that there is a slight outline here, and that's because that we have a white color underneath, so all we got to do to fix that is go and scale it a bit larger. You saw that it covered up that little unsightly white line we have. And you notice there's also some black underneath that we need to fill, and it's pretty simple to fix that. You just stretch it upward. And you can use the scale as a way to move to figure out what you want to do with the car. But that's pretty nice. That's what we want. It efficiently stretches across the car and around the back end. It does what we wanted it to do. And at this point, we would be let ready to slap a decal on. And the way, I'm going to quickly just go ahead and show you guys that, how the decals work for sponsorships or whatever. Let's say we want to do the media logo here. Let, let's, just sh let's just slap the Famitsu logo on the back. You don't have quite as many options. You can't skew it and you can't off proportionally scale it because it is an actual logo. It is something that is not a primitive, like is what like shapes, like what we were using. It, rather, it was just a uh, it's it's an actual brand logo. So to not deface that, you are locked on your scale. But that's honestly okay uh, because you really don't want to disproportionately scale logos anyhow. Um, we'll line this up a bit with the back end of the car and then just place it. You see, we can't recolor it, but we still have layer controls. And the way that it works is if you really wanted to, uh, let's say we wanted to move this here, and we just wanted to have these underneath the quarter panel, the way that the duplicate on reverse works is really handy. You see how it just made it move right over there, and we can finish editing, and we have it both equal on either side. So it also flips from side to side, and it goes from end to end on the bumper, which makes editing stuff really, really simple. Um, so yeah, guys, um, of course you can go into the rear wing if you want, and then you have your own separate sets of how to line things up here. We'll just put a simple little GT pattern in here, because these are some of the pattern tools, which are really fun to work with as well. And, uh, really above all else, though, it's just the creativity that drives it home. If you have an artistic vision, and you know what you want to do with a car, and you get into the paint booth, and you like what's going on, see there's a little issue there, but, uh, if you get in the paint booth, you like what's going on, and you, you start having that creative flow, you know what you're doing, things just start working. And it's really not as hard as it seems. Um, I'm going to quickly show you what would happen if we were to make this a matte. You see how the colors slightly change, how the reflection changes, and all of that. So that's basically how you make a simple livery in Gran Turismo. I hope you guys did enjoy this first tutorial. 
Um, if you want to see more, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you did enjoy, and there are there is some more to come from this. Uh, probably a couple more in the demo, and definitely more when the game releases on October 17th. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I helped you, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.